Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk from a dealer for you. Maybe your life has just turned upside down because you've had a baby and you have lots of questions. Or you've heard that breastfeeding is good for babies and you just want to know more about it. I'm Katie and in each episode, I talk about the processes going on in a woman's body, about the composition of breast milk and its effects, as well as tackling those myths and facts. Amazing, fascinating, and all backed up by science. In this episode, is it true that it takes a whole month for milk to mature? Can you sleep longer if your baby is fed formula? How does breast milk protect the baby from diseases? And how is the first month with a baby in Thailand? Hello and welcome back. The first days are over. The first steps into the new life at home have been taken. It is the first month in the life of your newborn. These are the weeks when your baby will really get going with breastfeeding and your supply builds to satisfy his growing tummy. By the end of this month, your milk will be fully mature. And although that mature milk is quite different from colostrum, it has more fat and therefore more calories, and you're producing much, much more of it, when it comes to meeting your baby's needs, it's just as good at multitasking. One of the most amazing things about breast milk is that it's live and actively fights off threats to your baby's health. Usually there is only a small amount of immune cells in your mature breast milk, up to 2%. But if you breathe, eat or drink bacteria or viruses that might infect you or your baby, the immune cells shoot up to 94% of your milk's cell count. Once the threat of infection recedes, your milk changes back again. As discussed in episode 3, some of the oligosaccharides in your milk block dangerous bacteria from sticking to the wall of your baby's gut. Others start building up his own protective microbial gut flora by feeding the helpful bacteria that will protect him as he grows. And remember... The more your baby feeds, the more milk you make. It's a case of supply and demand. Scientists believe breast milk contains something they call feedback inhibitor of lactation, for short, fill, which slows milk production. When your baby empties your breast of milk, the amount of fill also reduces, leaving your milk-producing cells free to make more milk and meet the demand. So if your breast is emptied regularly, it gets the message to refill more regularly. And if you're feeding twins or even triplets, you can make enough to feed them too. Your breasts work independently of each other. So if your baby has a favourite side or you have twins with different appetites, it's likely you'll have different amounts of milk in each breast. If you reduce your baby's breast milk feeds, the process works in reverse. Your breast fills with milk, but less of it is removed. As a consequence, the fill in the milk that stays in the breast tells your cells to slow down and eventually you'll stop making more milk. This is what happens when you start to wean your baby. The great news is that if you change your mind about dropping a feed, or your baby is poorly and wants only your milk, you can up your supply again by increasing the demand. That sounds quite exciting. Fittingly, did you know? Breastfeeding makes mums less stressed. Believe it or not, breastfeeding is already doing you good for the long term. However you're feeling at the moment, researchers have found that mums who have breastfed, even for just a few weeks, have lower blood pressure and their systems cope better with stress, thanks to all that oxytocin flowing. I love oxytocin. It's just a great hormone. Now, Let's move on to challenging the fact that formula-fed babies sleep longer. Myth or fact? You'll sleep more if you give your baby formula. 
It's a myth. Whether he's breastfed or formula fed, your baby is likely to wake for milk during the night for many months, possibly much longer. If you breastfeed, those night feeds should be quicker and easier. You can even do them lying down. What's more, breastfeeding raises your levels of the hormones oxytocin and prolactin, which makes you feel relaxed and sleepy and may help you to nod off more quickly after a feed. This may be why breastfeeding mums of under ones have actually been found to have significantly more hours of sleep, more energy and less postnatal depression than those who give their babies formula, despite waking a similar number of times in the night. More on the effects of breastfeeding on sleep in the next episode. Good to know, because this myth can cause a lot of uncertainty. If you've already looked into breastfeeding, you've probably come across the expression letdown reflex. What is the letdown reflex? Or milk ejection reflex? And how does it happen? You may have a tingling in your breasts before or at the start of a feed. But different women experience different sensations. And 21% of mums say they don't feel anything at all. But some women describe the letdown reflex as a whoosh feeling. Babies initially suck quickly to stimulate a letdown and start the milk flowing. Once the breast has been stimulated, they switch to a slower, deeper suck for the actual feeding phase to get as much milk as possible. But what's actually going on inside your breasts? Well, in response to your baby sucking, milk begins to flow through your ducts, which expand by 68%. If your baby sucking is interrupted during a letdown, you may find milk squirts out across the room. What's not commonly known is that you have more than one letdown during a feed. Tests using a breast pump showed that more than a third of the breast milk comes out with the first letdown. But the total number of letdowns can range from 2 to 14 over a 15-minute milk removal session. And just in case you're wondering, yes, the pattern and number of letdowns you have is the same whether you're pumping or breastfeeding. Some breastfeeding mothers may need to increase their milk production. Here are a few tips. The complex chain reactions that get your milk going can be encouraged by techniques that stimulate your breasts, your baby, or even your own mind. Healthcare professionals may recommend that you try relaxation techniques to reduce any anxiety that could affect your milk supply. You can also change your feeding position and or your baby's latch to improve the way he stimulates your nipple and have more skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby before or during a feed to get oxytocin flowing. Another recommendation from experts is to breastfeed and or pump more often, at least 8 to 12 times every 24 hours, with no more than 3 hours between feeds. You can also pump in addition to breastfeeding. During an average session, your baby drinks two-thirds of the milk in your breast. So if you drain any remainder, you'll increase production. You might get more if you wait an hour after breastfeeding, as your breasts will have created a little more milk and may be more responsive after a short break. If using a pump, use a double pump on both breasts at the same time, so your body has to work to refill your breasts and gets used to making more milk. Massage your breasts at the same time as breastfeeding or pumping to help milk flow through the milk ducts. Very important is make sure the funnel or cup part of the pump set that covers your breast is the right size. It should not press too hard on your breast as this may constrict your milk ducts and your nipple should not rub along the sides of the tunnel. Ouch! And last but not least, take prescription medication known as galactagogues that can help increase milk supply. However, be sure to talk to a healthcare professional about this because not all medications work in all circumstances. So many possibilities. 
it's best to get support if you want to increase your milk production. You don't have to be alone in this. Did you know? Breast milk knows your status. The composition of your milk may vary according to your baby's gender, but that's not all. It appears to adjust depending on the mother's circumstances too. One small study revealed that sons of well-off women in the US received richer, fattier breast milk, whereas in another study in some Kenyan villages, this type of milk went to the girls. Either way, your baby will still be getting plenty of fat from your milk. But these studies are fascinating indications of how breast milk might adapt depending on babies and society's needs. Speaking of fat in the milk, professionals are often asked whether a baby can be fed too much breast milk. Babies who are breastfed are 13% less likely to become overweight or obese as children or teenagers. This is partly, scientists think, because your milk contains hormones that help keep your growing child's weight on track. These include hormones which help regulate the appetite. Breast milk also contains two recently identified hormones that are helping to regulate food intake. Both are involved in the way our bodies produce and deal with insulin. In addition to these helpful hormones, your baby will only breastfeed until he's full, even if milk is still available. In fact, 39% of babies actually finish their feed during a letdown, while milk is actively flowing. In contrast, formula-fed babies tend to be encouraged to finish their bottles. Now to you and other new mothers around the world. If you're keen to be up and about, fine. But if all you feel like doing is staying on the sofa or in bed with your new baby, relax in the knowledge that this used to be the usual practice and is often still customary in communities around the world. Historically, new mothers had a lying in or confinement period ranging from two weeks to two months. During the Renaissance in Italy, the Desco de Parto a special tray decorated with scenes of female visitors at the mother's bedside with other women tending the new baby was used to pass gifts of chicken soup and sweetmeats to the mother in bed. And even as relatively recently as 1932, an American publication recommended new mums rest and delay getting up until the ninth day, although it was often a saving of time to stay in bed for 20 days rather than nine, lest the uterus become malpositioned. Many cultures today still recognise a special period of up to six weeks when all a new mum has to do is focus on her baby. For example, during the Yuduan in Thailand, mothers, aunts and husbands look after the woman for around 30 days and recommend massage and hot drinks, believed to increase milk supply. Meanwhile, in Mexico, the 40-day La Quarantena sees family members assisting with cooking, cleaning and caring for any older children. So give yourself the chance to focus on breastfeeding and bonding during those first weeks. Accept help when it's offered and rest assured in every sense. It's not just the first month that differs between cultures. In Mongolia, it's completely acceptable to breastfeed anywhere at any time and chat about it too. In fact, waving bare breasts is believed to be the perfect distraction for tantruming toddlers. In Japan, breastfeeding mums can use an app to find one of the many clean, free-to-use nursing rooms in shops, stations and official buildings. These come complete with chairs and basins and sometimes even play areas to keep any older children happy too. In the Philippines, workplaces are required to provide fully equipped lactation stations where employees can express and store breast milk hygienically and comfortably. That was fascinating. And just like that, we have come to the end of this episode. Thank you for being here with us. And one more thing to take away, just for you. A little reminder. 
It's still very early days and breastfeeding may be a steep learning curve. Babies this small feed little and often. This is to be expected, but it means the first month can be demanding and exhausting. If you're having trouble with your baby latching on, nipple soreness, engorgement, mastitis or blocked milk ducts, help is available. Contact a healthcare professional, lactation consultant or breastfeeding specialist. It's not too late and it's well worth tackling in those first four weeks. Get all the help you need and remember it won't be like this forever. In the next episode, you will hear about how your milk settles down next month. This was Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk. From Medela, for you. The references to the studies used for this podcast can be found at medela.com forward slash ebook. 